I've been a physicist for over four decades, and I've never seen anything like this. My name is Michio Kaku, and what I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. Three days ago, something happened that has left the scientific community in a state I can only describe as controlled panic. The object we've been calling 3I Atlas, an interstellar visitor that entered our solar system months ago, just did something that defies every prediction, every model, every assumption we've built our understanding of celestial mechanics upon. It breached the solar wind, not passed through it, not deflected by it, breached it, as if the boundary that separates our cosmic neighborhood from the vast interstellar void was nothing more than a suggestion. Before we begin, I need you to do something. Comment your city name below and tell me. Have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky lately? NASA has been tracking anomalous observations across the globe, and they want to know where these phenomena are being seen. I'm standing in my office right now looking at data that was classified until approximately six hours ago. The sun is setting outside my window, painting the sky in shades of amber and crimson, and I find myself wondering if we're watching the sunset of something far greater than just another day. Perhaps we're witnessing the twilight of our innocence as a species. Let me take you back to when we first detected this object. It was cataloged as 3I Atlas by astronomers using the Atlas Survey System in Hawaii the third known interstellar object to visit our solar system. The first was Oumuamua in 2017, that strange cigar-shaped anomaly that accelerated in ways we still can't fully explain. The second was Borisov in 2019, which at least behaved like a comet, giving us some comfort that we understood what we were looking at. But 3I Atlas was different from the moment it appeared in our telescopes. It was moving too fast, its trajectory was too precise, and its composition, well, that's where things started to unravel. NASA's Deep Space Tracking Network picked up something in the spectroscopic analysis that didn't match any known natural formation. The surface wasn't reflecting light the way rock or ice should. Instead, there were patterns, rhythmic variations in the albedo that suggested structure, deliberate structure. When I first saw the data, I told my colleagues it had to be an error. Instruments malfunction. Software glitches occur. We're human, and we make mistakes. But the data kept coming, and it was consistent. What truly disturbed me wasn't just the object itself, but its relationship with our sun's heliosphere, that massive bubble of solar wind that protects our solar system from interstellar radiation like a cosmic immune system. Every natural object that enters our solar system interacts with the solar wind in predictable ways. Comets develop tails. Asteroids experience minute pressure that affects their trajectory. It's basic physics, the kind of thing I teach to undergraduates. 3I Atlas ignored these rules entirely. As it approached the heliosphere's boundary, approximately 90 astronomical units from the sun, something extraordinary happened. The solar wind, that constant stream of charged particles flowing outward from our star at over a million miles per hour, began to behave erratically in the object's vicinity. Imagine a river flowing around a stone, except the stone is somehow redirecting the entire river's current in ways that violate fluid dynamics. NASA's team initially thought their instruments were compromised. They recalibrated, they double-checked, they brought in independent verification from the European Space Agency and the Chinese National Space Administration. Everyone saw the same thing. The solar wind was bending around 3I Atlas, creating a bow shock that extended for millions of miles, far larger than any natural object of its size should produce. Then came the breakthrough that changed everything. Dr. Sarah Chen at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory was analyzing the radio emissions from the region when she noticed something that made her physically step back from her monitor. There was a signal embedded in the plasma disturbances. Not random noise, not natural electromagnetic interference. A signal with structure, with repetition, with what could only be described as syntax. I received the call at two in the morning. Sarah's voice was shaking. Michio, she said, we're picking up a transmission, and it's getting stronger as the object approaches the heliopause. The heliopause, 
That critical boundary where the solar wind meets the interstellar medium, the edge of our sun's influence, the doorstep of our cosmic home. I was on a plane to Pasadena within hours. What I saw in that secure facility will haunt me for the rest of my life, not because it was frightening in a conventional sense, but because it was proof. Undeniable, mathematical, elegant proof that we are not alone. And more disturbingly, that we are being watched, studied, perhaps even quarantined. The signal wasn't just random pulses. It was a countdown, a mathematical sequence that decreased with each passing hour as 3i Atlas approached the heliopause. Prime numbers arranged in a descending pattern that any civilization with basic mathematics would recognize as artificial. It was a universal language, the kind that Carl Sagan dreamed about, except it wasn't a greeting. It was a warning. When 3i Atlas reached the heliopause, the countdown reached zero. And that's when everything we thought we knew about space, about physics, about about the nature of reality itself began to crumble. The object didn't slow down. It didn't deflect. Instead, something emerged from it, a wave of energy that passed through the solar wind like it wasn't even there. Our instruments registered it as a coherent beam of exotic particles we've never encountered before. Not photons, not neutrinos, something else entirely, something that interacted with the fabric of space-time itself. The beam penetrated the heliosphere and created what I can only describe as a hole, a temporary rupture in the solar wind's protective barrier. For approximately 17 minutes, there was a corridor through which interstellar radiation poured into our solar system unimpeded. Our satellites detected a spike in cosmic ray exposure. The International Space Station went into emergency protocol. Astronauts were moved to shielded compartments. And then, just as suddenly as it appeared, the breach sealed itself. The solar wind resumed its normal flow. Three, I Atlas continued on its trajectory toward the inner solar system, now moving even faster than before, as if it had been accelerated by whatever energy it had released. But here's what terrifies me. Here's what keeps me awake at night, staring at equations that no longer make sense. The signal didn't stop. It changed. After the breach, the transmission from 3i Atlas transformed into something far more complex. We're still trying to decode it, but preliminary analysis suggests it's not directed at us. It's directed outward, into deep space, into the galactic plane, as if the object had sent a message back to wherever it came from, reporting on what it found here, reporting on us. I've spent my entire career studying the cosmos, writing books about the future of humanity, about our destiny among the stars. I've been optimistic, even romantic, about the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence. I've said publicly that any civilization advanced enough to reach us would likely be benevolent, having survived their own technological adolescence. I've believed that contact would be the greatest moment in human history. Now, I'm not so sure. There's a concept in astrobiology called the galactic quarantine hypothesis. It suggests that if intelligent alien civilizations exist, they might deliberately avoid contact with younger species like us, not out of indifference, but as a protective measure, either to protect us from knowledge we're not ready for or to protect themselves from us. What if 3i Atlas is part of that quarantine system? What if we're living inside a cosmic preserve and something just tested the fence? The implications are staggering. If this object is artificial and every piece of data suggests it is, then whoever built it possesses technology that makes our most advanced spacecraft look like stone tools. They can manipulate the solar wind. They can breach the heliosphere at will. They can transmit information across interstellar distances in ways we don't understand. And they're watching us. NASA has convened an emergency task force. The world's leading physicists, astronomers, and exobiologists are being brought together in secure facilities. Governments are being briefed. Protocols are being drafted. But here's the truth that no one wants to say out loud. We have no idea what to do. How do you prepare for contact with an intelligence so far beyond our own that the gap can't even be measured? How do you negotiate with an entity that can punch holes in your star's protective envelope? How do you even begin to communicate when they're clearly not interested in communicating with you? I keep thinking about humanity's position in the universe. We've built civilizations, split the atom, mapped the human genome, sent robots to Mars. We think of ourselves as intelligent, as masters of our world, but to the creator 
readers of 3i Atlas, we might be nothing more than an interesting biological phenomenon, a species that shows promise but hasn't yet earned the right to join the galactic community. Or worse, we might be seen as a threat. Consider our history. In just over a century, we went from the first powered flight to landing on the moon. We've gone from basic radio to quantum computing. Our technology is accelerating at an exponential rate. We're developing artificial intelligence that may soon surpass human cognitive abilities. We're editing our own genetic code. We're building weapons that could sterilize our entire planet. What if older civilizations look at species like us and see a danger? A race that's technologically adolescent but advancing too quickly, like a child who's found a loaded gun. What if the galactic quarantine isn't to protect us, but to protect everyone else from us? The signal from 3i Atlas continues to transmit. Every hour, our radio telescopes pick up its message being sent into the void. We've tried to triangulate where it's aimed, but the calculations are disturbing. The beam appears to be directed toward multiple star systems simultaneously. Systems that are hundreds, even thousands of light years away. Systems we've identified as potentially harboring habitable planets. It's as if 3i Atlas is updating a network, a vast cosmic cosmic surveillance system monitoring worlds like ours across the galaxy. I've been asked by government officials not to share certain details with the public. They're worried about panic, about social instability, about the psychological impact of realizing we're not in control of our own cosmic destiny. But I believe people have a right to know. We have a right to understand our place in the universe, even if that truth is uncomfortable. Three days ago, our solar system was breached by something we don't understand, built by someone we can't comprehend, for purposes we can only guess at. The protective barrier that has shielded Earth for billions of years, allowing life to evolve, allowing human consciousness to emerge, allowing us to reach for the stars, that barrier was penetrated as easily as stepping through a doorway. And the most terrifying part? We detected no malice, no hostility, just cold, efficient purpose. 3i Atlas did what it came here to do and continued on its path. We weren't worth attacking. We weren't even worth acknowledging directly. We were simply documented. I find myself wondering about all the other solar systems out there, scattered across the Milky Way like grains of sand on a beach. How many of them have received similar visits? How many young civilizations have looked up at their skies and watched objects like 3i Atlas passing through, taking notes, updating some vast database of cosmic information? Are we all living in a zoo, a carefully observed collection of species being studied by intelligences so advanced that we're as alien to them as bacteria in a petri dish, the object is currently passing through the asteroid belt, heading toward the inner solar system. Its trajectory will take it within Mars's orbit in approximately four months. NASA has already positioned every available telescope and probe to observe its passage. We're going to get a much closer look at this thing, and honestly, I don't know if I'm ready for what we might discover. What if it stops? What if it alters course and heads toward Earth? What if the breach of the heliosphere was just the first test and the real purpose of 3i Atlas is something we haven't even imagined? Or what if it simply passes through our solar system and continues into deep space, leaving us with more questions than answers? In some ways, that might be worse. The uncertainty, the knowledge that we've been visited, cataloged, and then ignored, that we're not important enough to warrant even a direct message. I've dedicated my life to understanding the universe. I've believed that knowledge is power, that comprehension brings comfort, that the more we understand about reality, the less we have to fear. But this experience has taught me something profound and disturbing. Some knowledge doesn't bring comfort. Some truths don't set you free. Sometimes understanding only reveals how little you actually knew. The ancient philosophers debated whether humanity was at the center of creation or just another part of nature. Copernicus displaced us from the center of the solar system. Darwin showed us we're related to all life on Earth. Hubble revealed our galaxy is just one among billions. Each discovery has been a step down from our imagined pedestal. Now we face perhaps the final displacement. We're not just one planet among many, one species among millions. We're one watched civilization among what might be countless others, all living under the gaze of intelligences we can't comprehend, within systems of control we're only beginning to detect. 
The solar wind continues to blow. The sun continues to shine. Life on Earth goes on as it always has. But something has fundamentally changed. A line has been crossed. A boundary has been breached. And we can never go back to the innocent belief that we're alone, that space is empty, that the universe is waiting for us to explore it. The universe isn't empty. It's full. And we're just beginning to realize that we've been living in someone else's cosmic neighborhood this entire time. I look at my equations now. The beautiful mathematical frameworks that describe gravity, space-time, quantum mechanics. And I wonder how incomplete they are. What fundamental forces are we missing? What dimensions of reality can the creators of 3i Atlas perceive that we can't? How much of the universe is invisible to us not because of technological limitations, but because our consciousness itself is too limited to register it? These are questions that haunt me as I watch the data streaming in from our telescopes. Questions that have no easy answers. Questions that might not have answers at all, at least not for a species at our level of development. Follow this channel as we continue to track 3i Atlas and decode the universe's final warnings. Because I believe more revelations are coming. The breach of our solar wind was not an end. It was a beginning. A signal that something has changed in our relationship with the cosmos. Whether that change leads to enlightenment or catastrophe, I cannot say. But I do know this. We are living through the most important moment in human history. The moment when we transition from cosmic children to cosmic adolescence. The moment when we discover we're not alone. The moment when we're forced to confront the possibility that our dreams of exploring the stars might be just that dreams. That we might be confined to this solar system not by the limits of our technology, but by the will of others. So, I ask you, as you look up at the night sky tonight, what does it mean to be human in a universe where we're being watched, where our protective barriers can be breached at will, where our entire existence might be nothing more than a footnote in someone else's cosmic catalog, and perhaps more importantly, if they're watching us, studying us, updating their records on our progress, what exactly are they waiting for?